On a peaceful winter night, the entire capital city is suddenly thrown into chaos because of a deadly virus that has spread to all the humans in the surrounding area. Though the virus aims to wipe out the entire human race, it fails to do so because it doesn't affect children from ages 13 and younger. A strange group of cloaked men who happen to be vampires appear out of nowhere and then go around the city to gather all the children they can find and transport them to a creepy-looking castle. Four years later, these kids are seen to be living in the creepy castle, which is known to be a Hakia orphanage. During this time, the children abide by vampires' instructions, all except from a dark-haired boy named Yu. Yu is considered to be a rebellious kid who has despised everything that goes on in the orphanage right from the time he arrived. After all, he had only come there because his own father attempted to kill him. At the same time, his own mother killed herself because she believed that she was some sort of demon child. Despite Yu's cold and arrogant behavior towards the others, a kid named Mika still takes interest in him and wants to be his friend. Over the years, Mika notices that Yu has a rebellious behavior, so he does his best to protect him from the wrath of the vampires who govern them. This brings up an instance where Mika had to yet again cover up for Yu's rebellious attitude by letting the vampires suck a quantity of his blood as a punishment. After he has served the punishment, Mika returns home later that night and invites Yu to the dining table to eat some of the leftover curry with him. As they eat, he opens up to Yu and tells him that he also despises the vampires and everything about them. However, he reminds himself that they are mere humans, so they aren't strong enough to defeat them. Because of this, he hands Yu a gun that he has stolen from the vampire while he was under punishment. Yu is shocked to see this because he always thought that Mika was willing to do whatever the vampires asked of him and never try to disobey. After this, he brings out a map of the entire city and throws it to Yu while telling him that he wants them all to try to escape from this orphanage. Yu hears this and thinks of this to be a terrible idea because he has heard rumors of the death of anyone who ever tried to escape due to the virus outside. However, Mika lets him know that he has thought this fully through by explaining his foolproof plan to him. He thinks like this because he is aware that the deadly virus only affects individuals who are 13 years or older, so since the oldest among them all was 12 years old, it wouldn't have any trouble on the outside world. Another one of the orphans named Akane walks downstairs and is surprised to see Yu and Mika at the dining table at such a late hour. Just as she asks them both for what's going on, Yu gets up from his chair and tells her to wake everyone else up, because they all are going to be escaping that night. So with the aid of the map, the crew are able to navigate their way to the entrance of the castle, where they would be able to escape to the outside world. After a few minutes, they come across a bright room, which is believed to be the last room they have to get past in order to cross over to the outside. They all have bright smiles on their faces as they approach the end of the room because they believe that they have finally been able to escape. But right before they reach the end of the room, the head vampire walks out from the shadows and orders them to halt. At this moment, the smiles of the little kids instantly turn upside down because they know that this is the end of the road for them. Before they can even think to make a next move, the head vampire quickly grabs one of the little girls and kills her by sucking all her blood out after which he goes on to slaughter the rest of the kids, leaving only Yu, Mika, and Akana. After Akana is killed, Mika has come to accept his fate, so he offers himself as a sacrifice, so that Yu might be able to finish him off with the gun that he stole earlier. Mika runs full force at the head vampire with a gun in hand, all in an attempt to kill him. But before he is able to get close enough, he is stabbed right through the chest. In reality, this solely wasn't an attack but it rather served as a distraction for you to sneak up behind and finally kill the head vampire with a gun. Now that the final obstacle has been taken down, Yu tries to carry Mika out of there, but he soon realizes that he has been injured beyond repair. As he sits there in tears, Mika musters up the last of his strength to tell him to get the hell out of there while he still can. Although he doesn't want to leave Mika behind, he realizes that he has no choice, so he turns back and runs full speed while wiping tears off his eyes. After running for a couple seconds, he is surprised to find himself in a snowy environment. He looks back and sees some cloaked men walk towards him and tell him that he is the chosen one who is destined to defeat the vampires. Yu has hated these vampires for as long as he can remember, so he decides to take on this responsibility without hesitation. Yu is introduced to this strange man as the lieutenant colonel of the Japanese demon army named Ichinose Gurin. At this moment, his two brain cells finally click, which makes him wonder how there are still other humans alive is in complete shock because the vampires had always told them that the human race has been wiped out. But it is now revealed to him that although the virus reduced the population of humanity by a lot, there are still several people that survived due to the virus having died down after some time. After this has been said, 
Gurren looks in Yu's direction and tells him to join them if he wants to put an end to the vampires once and for all. Four years later, after Yu had undergone the necessary training, he's seen fighting a giant monster with a katana in an abandoned city. After that, he heads back to his normal school, which he sees to be a total waste of time. Once class is over, he comes across an interesting purple-haired girl named Shinoa who he isn't familiar with. She is aware of just how sad Yu's life is, so she advises him to try and improve his social life because Lieutenant Gurren is never going to recruit a friendless virgin like him into the Vampire Extermination Unit. While they are near the lockers, Shinoa reveals that she has been assigned to Yu as his army surveillance officer to ensure that he makes some friends. At the same time, he notices a student who seems to be getting bullied by the other fellow students led by a guy named Yamanaka. His first instinct is to turn a blind eye to it and walk away, but Shino persuades him into being a nice guy and saving the student from the bullies. Yu then walks up to the bullies and urges them to stop. He considers himself to be quite strong, so he believes that he would be able to fight them all at once if worse comes to worst. But right before he attempts to fight, Shino informs him that he would get an extended suspension if he is to beat up any other student in the school. This alone leads him to getting punched right in the face. On their way back, the kid who goes by the name Yoichi explains to Yu that he actually wasn't getting bullied back there, but was rather getting rejected after asking Yamanaka for a favor. Apparently, Yamanaka is so skilled that he has already been promised a spot in the Vampire Extermination Unit. Because of that, he hoped that Yamanaka could also put a good word for him because he is very determined to become a member of the demon army. Yoichi has this ambition because he wishes to avenge his elder sister who was killed by a vampire while he was little. Yu hears this and gains a little respect for him, but still tells him to not bother joining the demon army because he doesn't think he's cut out for it. Just then, a loud emergency alarm goes off, which alerts everyone that a vampire has been spotted nearby. Shinoa hears this alarm and instantly thinks to call the demon army, but Yu believes that this is his chance to prove his combat skills to Lieutenant Gurren, so he runs head straight for the vampire and attempt to kill it alone. He reaches a deserted classroom where he sees a pink-haired vampire sucking the blood off one of the students of the school. He looks down to the side and also sees Yamanaka laying on the floor in fear, which he finds to be a little odd because Yoichi had previously told him that he is currently the top pick for the vampire extermination unit. As Yamanaka lies in fear, he explains to Yu that him being a top pick was all just a huge lie he cooked up to make people scared of him. Now that is cleared up, he begins to battle the vampire with his katana. Yu definitely possesses the required skill set to take the vampire down. But since his weapon is weak, he fails to deal any significant damage. He continues to battle with his vampire until he lands outside in a bush and on landing, he seems to have pierced her right through the chest. But even with that, it still doesn't kill her. Lucky for him, Lieutenant Gurren comes up behind her and uses his cursed blade to stab her through the chest, which makes her fade away. Now that this is over, the lieutenant commends you for his hard work, and also for the fact that he had successfully protected the school. At this point, he thinks that this alone would make the lieutenant select him to be a member of Demon Moon Company. However, the lieutenant still sees you to be a friendless loser, so he tells him that he won't be recruiting him unless he manages to find some friends. Then all of a sudden, Yuichi appears out of a nowhere and jumps onto Yu while expressing his delight that he is okay. Yuichi is now considered to be Yu's friend, so the lieutenant has no choice than to hold up his end of the bargain. However, this fall knocks Yu unconscious, so a couple hours later, he wakes up in a hospital bed, where he sees Yuichi and Shinoa. Upon his awakening, Shinoa informs Yu that the lieutenant has officially recruited him into the Vampire Extermination Unit, which is all he has ever wanted. After this, the three of them join hands to celebrate this news which marks the beginning of their journey together. Yu acknowledges that he is now a member of the Vampire Extermination Unit which means that he is now one step closer to getting his wish of avenging his family. The next day, he and Shinoa are seen together on the school roof. Yu complains to her about the fact that he is still being forced to go to regular school even though he is now a member of the unit. He is even more frustrated at the fact that he hasn't had any actual training sessions ever since he was recruited. Shino understands his logic, so she decides to spar with him in order to calm him down. She then unleashes her infernal demon scythe, which is capable of killing a vampire with just a single strike. Yu sees this and smirks while bringing out his regular katana to see just how powerful she is. The battle begins and Shino easily overpowers Yu with the help of her infernal scythe. After a few blows are thrown, Yu realizes that he doesn't stand a chance against her with his weapon, so decides to call it off. Following that, they are both seen taking a walk in the school halls. 
all while Shino lectures you about having to utilize teamwork while he is working with a unit because when facing a high-ranking vampire, it simply isn't a one-man job. Then all of a sudden, this conversation is cut short when Yoichi runs up to them while screaming for help. Yuma assumes that he is being bullied yet again, but to his surprise, he sees Yamanaka and his goon walk up to Yoichi, while asking him to make them his loyal henchmen. As Yu remains confused as to why they would want this, it is revealed to him that these guys are doing this because they have a favor to ask. Apparently, one of their friends named Yuji had gone into a mystic place known as the Forbidden Chamber, but never made it back out. Shinoa hears this and concludes that their friend Yuji has most likely been captured by the army, since trespassing on those grounds are forbidden. After which she also adds that he also faced a death penalty for it. Shinoa believes that it would be best for Yamanaka to just forget about Yuji, because she didn't think there's a high enough chance of him getting out of there in one piece, but she is still willing to give it a shot with the help of Yu and Yoichi. Shuno considers this to be an excellent training exercise for Yu, so a couple minutes later, the three of them head down into the Forbidden Chamber and attempt to save Yuji. Shortly after, they arrive at the Forbidden Chamber where they see Yuji holding an infernal arm weapon, while standing at the center of a magic circle. Shinoa observes this and starts to explain that Yuji is currently being possessed by a demon, meaning that the only way he'll go back to being a human would be if the demon is successfully exercised. Shinoa considers this to be a bigger threat than they can handle, so she tells them both to just hang back and wait for the rest of the vampire extermination unit to arrive. However, Yu doesn't have that kind of patience, so he just rushes down to Yuji, because he believes that he would be able to handle it on his own. He is also eager to win this battle because the infernal arm that Yuji is holding hasn't formed a contract with any demon yet, which means that if Yu is able to win, he would claim the weapon for himself. As he reaches the magic circle, Shino appears and stops him from launching his attack, because she believes that the demon would easily be able to possess him since he has a strong thirst for revenge. As expected, he doesn't heed to her warning and begins to attack Yuji with his well-refined combat skills. Now before he knows it, he finds himself back at the Hayakuya orphanage with the rest of his family. He is really confused as to how this is possible because he knows they all were on the night of his escape. It turns out that this is all a hallucination being played on him by the demon he attacked. At first, he doesn't realize this, so the demon uses Mika's persona to try and persuade Yu into letting him take over his body so he would have the power to get his revenge. He thinks over it at first, but soon realizes that the situation isn't real because he knows Mika would never insist on Yu getting his revenge. Because of that, he is easily able to break free from the hallucinations and make it back to the real world. A couple minutes later, he wakes up to see Yuichi and Shinoa facing him while sitting on the ground. Shinoa was aware that he has been hallucinating, but is shocked to find out that he was able to break free from it on his own. Yu hears this and gets excited because this means that he was able to exorcise the demon all on his own. He then asks Shinoa whether this means he is free to claim the demon weapon for himself, for which she replies saying that it's not that simple. Although the weapon isn't contracted to any demon, it will still need to be taken over to Lieutenant Gurin before it can be handed over to him. But even after that, Shinoa still remains shocked that he was able to overcome the demon. Meanwhile, at the orphanage, Mika is still alive and well, and has matured to be around Yu's age. Let's go back the night where Yu and the other have attempted to escape. After Mika got his arm cut off and is laying on the floor, he tells Yu to get the hell out of there because he wants to ensure his safety. Just as Mika awaits his death, the vampire queen, known as Cruel, walks in to see all the bodies lying in a pool of blood. She examines them all and sees that Mika is the only one left with a chance of survival, so she has the idea to let him drink her blood. Drinking her blood would restore his body, but would also turn him into a vampire with eternal life. The head vampire Farid then wakes up and expresses his disagreement with this idea of hers, because it's forbidden to intentionally convert a human to a vampire. Unfortunately, Cruel doesn't really care about the rules, so she just decides to beat the head vampire up to keep his mouth shut. After which, she goes down on Mika and forces him to drink her blood, hence turning him to a vampire with eternal life. Back at the school, Yu is strolling peacefully along the halls until he comes across a pink-haired guy in glasses who goes by the name Kimizuki. Without any provocation, Kimizuku walks up to Yu and randomly punches him right across the face. Yu is pissed off by this, so they both begin to brawl in the school hallway. Later that day, Shinoa takes them over to the class to where Yu and Yuichi are to officially start their training for the Moon Demon Army. After a few seconds, they walk into the classroom of students, which is being taught by Lieutenant Gurin, who happens to be asleep. 
Once Kevin is aware of their arrival, he introduces them to the rest of the class, and they make their way to their seats. Yu walks over to the seat and is shocked to see that it is already being occupied by the same Kimizuki who had punched him in the hallway earlier for no reason. This reunion of theirs causes them both to foolishly bicker, until Lieutenant Gurin gets tired of it and gives them roundhouse kick. After the class, Kimizuki goes into the lieutenant's office and wishes to confirm whether he would be granted a trial for the top-ranked Black Demon series because he has the best grades in the class. The lieutenant is aware of his stellar performance in class, but just finds it a bit annoying that he's in a rush to acquire power. After Kimizuki hears this, he does well to remind the lieutenant that he wishes to become a member of the Demon Moon Army so that he would be granted access to treatment for his sister. Apparently, his little sister got infected with the apocalypse virus a little while ago and the treatment isn't available to regular civilians but only made available to the families of members of the Demon Army, which explains why Kimizuki is bent on joining so soon. Now that Lieutenant Guren has been reminded, he still urges him not to be in such a rush as he believes he would eventually get possessed by a demon cause of how thirsty his desire is. The next day, all the students are gathered in a large room to have their abilities assessed in preparation for the Infernal Arms aptitude test coming up the following week. If a student fails to produce results here, he or she wouldn't be able to take the test next week. The instructor tells them all to pair since they are about to take a team exercise to see how well each student works with a team. Shinola knows that this isn't Yu's strong suit, so she intentionally pairs up with Yuichi, so that Yu would be forced to pair up with his arch nemesis Kimizuki. Shortly after, the exercise begins, and as expected, Yu and Kimizuki have no chemistry together as a team. Then all of a sudden, an emergency alarm is heard calling Kimizuki out because his little sister's medical condition is deteriorating quickly. At first, Kimizuki doesn't want to go, so he tells the instructor not worry about it and carry on with the exercise because he knows that the only way to save her is for him to successfully join the demon army. Yu hears this logic of his and is so pissed off by it that he slaps him right across the face. After this, he advises him not to take things for granted because if his sister dies, he won't be able to see her anymore. This issue is very sensitive to Yu because that was the exact same mistake he made while he was a kid. Now that Kimizuki has been slapped back to his sense, he and Yu rush over to his sister's hospital room because they both have been handcuffed together for the team exercise. On reaching there, Yu sits beside his sister's hospital bed while he realizes and understands why Kimizuki wants to join the demon army so bad. On leaving the hospital room, he and Yu are seen sitting outside the hospital back to back on a bench. Although Kimizuki still blames Yu for his poor performance in the team assessment test, the time they spend together, forms a little bond which continues to drive them forward to achieve their goals. Meanwhile, Mika is seen to attend a vampire conference, where it is announced that another apocalypse virus like the one that happened eight years ago will break out once again. Because of this, Cruel thinks of it to be an excellent opportunity to wipe the rest of the human race and the Japanese Imperial Demon Army. A couple days later, the Japanese Imperial Army can sense some suspicious activity from the vampires, so they decide to have a meeting to discuss. This meeting is being led by Haragi Shinoa, the Major General of the Japanese Imperial Army. Half an hour into the meeting, Lieutenant Gurren is spotted to be sleeping through it, so after he's woken up, he is bored by the speech that is being given and just decides to leave arrogantly. Yu runs into the Lieutenant as he walks out, so he decides to greet him with a flying Bruce Lee kick because he is angry at the fact that it has been 10 days and the Lieutenant still hasn't given him his infernal arm weapon yet. Although the lieutenant doesn't like the fact that Yu is still so desperate for power, he also doesn't want the major general to meet him out there, so he gives Yu his word that he would soon prepare the contract for his infernal weapon. Meanwhile, at the orphanage, an airplane is being prepared for the vampires to be transported to spread the apocalypse virus and take over humanity. Mika is aware of the situation on ground and doesn't like it one bit, but he has no choice than to go along with it. Though a tiny part of him is excited because he has hopes of being reunited with Yu after all these years of being apart. The next day at the school, the written test results are being handed out. Yu doesn't bother taking the theoretical education seriously, so he fails woefully by getting a zero. Shinoa finds out and then spreads the news of his failure to the rest of his classmates, which makes him popular, but not in the way he would want. Following this, Yu also discovers that Kimizuki got a perfect score on the test, which he is shocked to see because he never knew he was that good at school. At that same moment, Lieutenant Gurren walks in, which takes all the students by surprise because he has been absent for over 10 days now. Yu focuses all of his attention on the lieutenant and reminds him about the infernal arm weapon that he promised him a little while ago. It is well evident that the rest of the students want to start wielding infernal weapons, 
but the instructor informs him that she is unsure that all the students have built up a resistance to a demon's temptation. In fact, she believes that the only capable person among them is Yoichi. Guren hears this and decides to be fair about it, so he unleashes his demon blade with demons to possess the students. Whoever is still standing or conscious would be getting their own infernal demon weapon. After the lieutenant does this, the only people left standing are Yu, Yoichi, Shunoa, and Kimizuki. Since they are the only ones left standing, they are to be given their own infernal weapons. Then they walk to the area where the contract forming ceremony would be done. Before they arrive, the instructor expresses her concerns for Yoichi because although he might have enough power to resist a demon, she doesn't think he has enough power to harbor a demon during the ceremony. If a ceremony goes on and Yoichi truly doesn't have enough power, it would spell out sudden death for him. The lieutenant hears this and gives Yoichi the option to back out, but he still decides to risk it because he is determined to avenge his sister, who was killed by a vampire while he was little. Shortly after, they arrive at the ceremony area, where Gurren instructs them to select a weapon of their choice and then step into the magic circle to acquire the demon's power. However, they are also made aware that they would end up dead if they fail to overpower the demon and collect its power. So with all this being said, Yu walks over to a nearby katana, he draws it, and just like that, his contract forming ceremony has officially begun. Following this ceremony, they all start to live short scenes of their innermost memories. This is orchestrated by the demon in charge of their weapon to check if they are able to overcome it on their own. Yorichi is seen reliving his childhood trauma of when his sister was killed by a vampire. He remains under the bed while he watches his sister die. After this, she comes back to life and is now possessed by the demon. Meanwhile, Kimizuki is also seen living his innermost memory where he is a caregiver for his sister in the hospital. After some moments, she is possessed by the demon and starts to torment him by calling him a greedy dude who only wants to benefit for himself. Back in the real world, Lieutenant Gurren watches over them all and judges by Kimizuki's hand movement that he is definitely going to be successful. Following this, he was seen in his own nightmare facing a demon. Initially, the demon assumed Mika's body, but you already knew that trick, so it decides to just assume his raw form. After a few moments, he has been hung up by the demons and starts to guilt trip him by saying that he has made new friends at school and abandoned his initial family. At first, Yu gives into this torment, then a few minutes later, he is easily able to overpower the demon and exit that nightmare state. After he is able to escape, he finds himself seated before the demon in a state of limbo. He has finally been able to overpower the demon, so it is here to hand over its power to him. But before it does, the demon introduces itself as Esoromaru and lets you know that he isn't a full human, but rather made up of 10% non-human parts, probably as a result of a human experiment while he was young. Yu hears this and doesn't understand, so he just tells her to stop yapping and hand over the power to him. Once this done, Yu wakes up to see that Kimizuki has already succeeded way before him. However, Yoichi still remains in that state and Guren has his doubts on whether he would be able to break free. Meanwhile, in his nightmare, the demon who possesses his sister gets sick and tired of his timid attitude, so it doesn't think of him to be fit as a master because she can't sense any hint of vengeance in his heart. Because of this, she is easily able to take over Yoichi's body and turns him into a murderous demon. In the real world, Yoichi has officially turned into a demon, so Lieutenant Gurren concludes his case and orders Yu and Kimizuki to kill him off as their first act of service to the demon army. Despite this being an order, the two of them don't seem to be able to bring themselves to kill one of Conrad's. As they continue to attack aimlessly, Yuichi's possessed body uses its weapon to attack them with murderous intent. Shino, who is always so nonchalant, ends up showing her affectionate side as she begs the lieutenant to not make Yu and Kimizuki kill Yuichi, because she knows it has the potential to scar them for life. With this in mind, Yu tries using his words to win over the demon in Yuichi but it fails to get through to him, and the demon laughs right in his face. Then, just as they believe all hope is lost, Yu goes up right in front of the demon and throws his weapon away while talking to Yuichi and telling him not to give up and let the demon win. The lieutenant also joins in this motivational talk and is finally able to help Yuichi overcome the demon. Now that he has broken free, he returns back to his usual wimpy self and runs over to embrace Yu. After this, Gurren comes over and kicks you in the stomach for defying an order that was given straight to him. He then commands Yoichi for finally mustering up the power to be able to attain his own infernal arm weapon. The lieutenant also advises Yu to let go of the burden of his old family and focus on this new family he is in. 
The next morning, he wakes up to his first day as an official member of the Japanese Imperial Demon Army, so he is dressed in his uniform and heads out with his infernal katana. Following that, he arrives at the train station, and at the moment, he sees how cute Shinoa's outfit is. He lets out a slight blush but tries his best not to make it obvious so he doesn't lose his aura. As they both ride the train, Shino explains the task, being that it's their job today to stop a group of vampires who are planning to take over the area of Shinjuku. About an hour later, they arrive at the location, where they see the rest of the squad along with an unfamiliar cranky blonde girl. This girl is introduced to them by Giren as Mitsu, who has already been a member of the Japanese Imperial Demon Army for a while now. Apparently, she and Shinoa know each other previously and have a little score to settle amongst themselves. Naturally, the both of them start to bicker, but the lieutenant quickly gets tired of it, so he grabs them both by the throat and orders them to cut it out. After this, he officially informs them all that Mitsu is their new comrade whom is to be treated like one of theirs. The lieutenant felt the need to add another member because he knows that demon army squads often travel in a group of five. And also, the more they are, they run an overall lower risk of getting killed by a vampire. Then as their task is being explained, Mitsu comes out of nowhere and attempts to give you an overhead kick to test his abilities, for which he is easily able to block. After this, they all are able to focus on their primary mission being that they are to make their way to the area of Harajuku. They are then supposed to look out for a settlement where vampires keep humans as their personal blood bags. As the instructions are delivered properly, the team immediately set out to complete this task. On their way there, Mitsu does her best to make the journey as annoying as it's possible by being so uptight and yelling over the smallest things. Suddenly, they see a little girl screaming and being chased by a giant monster known as a horseman. Even though this little girl is at the risk of death, Mitsu still gives the order to not save her. Who doesn't want to be the one to sit idly by while a little girl gets killed, so he stops caring about Mitsu's order and attempts to save the little girl on his own. But before he is able to leave, Mitsu grabs his arm and stops him from moving because she doesn't want them to break their formation. Now even though his hand is being held, Yu sees that the girl is about to get killed, so he breaks free of Mitsu's grip and then immediately runs over to help the girl. Fortunately, right before she gets killed, Yu appears in front of her and is able to stop the monster from attacking her. Although Yu has managed to save her, this action alone brings what Mitsu feared to life, being that the squad of vampires used the little girl as bait, which would provide an opening for them to attack. Thankfully, the rest of them didn't draw in to save the little girl, so as the vampires appeared, the others were able to hold them off for a while. After Yu ensured the girl's safety, he draws his infernal katana yet again, but this time, a strange marking appears on his face. Once faced against these vampires, Yu summons the power of his demon and uses it to launch an attack, which makes them rethink their entire strategy. They consider him to be so powerful that they need to call for backup, which is fortunate for the demon army because it provides an opportunity for them to retreat. Now that they are back at base, Mitsu goes up to Yu and slaps him right across the face for defying her orders and also for placing the entire squad in immense danger. Although Yu sees the logic in her scolding him, he lets her know that he still doesn't regret saving that little girl because he wasn't the kind of person to sit by and watch an innocent person die. Later that night, Mitsu and Shinola are in the shower together. So they discuss all that happened today on the battlefield. During this talk, Mitsu mentions that she behaved just like how Yu did when she was new to the Japanese Imperial Army. Apparently, her determination for wanting to save everyone put her team in danger a long time ago, which caused one of her teammates to die while protecting her. Ever since that day, she despises anyone who puts the lives of their comrades at risk. Meanwhile, the boys are in the locker room questioning the little girl about the vampire hideout where she was kept hostage. At first, she says she doesn't want to talk about it because it was a very traumatic experience, but later decides to tell them as a way of showing appreciation for saving her life. The girls then come out of the shower just in time to hear the story. The little girl tells them that the hideout is situated at the Amotsando station, which is where the vampires harbor any human they can find and keep them for blood reserves. The next day, the crew set out for this location and are determined to crush any vampire in there and put a stop to it once and for all. Before they go on, Shino informs them of their strategy and also makes them aware that their goal is to crush all vampires and escape without a scratch. The crew goes into the abandoned subway with the intent of attacking with full force because even though the vampires outnumber them 7 to 5, they are supposed to be inactive at this time of day, which makes them a much easier target. They go in to see a large group of humans sitting on the floor, but they look around and find it strange that there are no vampires watching over them. 
Since the humans are so close to the entrance, it doesn't make sense why they don't just try to escape while the vampires are away. Mitsu observes this and explains that it's because going outside would be a definite suicide mission for them, because it's crawling with dangerous monsters, so they have no choice than to remain under the protection of the vampires and return for giving them their blood to drink. After this, they walk into the next area of the abandoned subway, where they immediately spot a white-cloaked vampire. Even before Mitsu is able to give the orders on how to attack, Yu rushes into the battle yet again because he is eager to get his first kill as a vampire slayer. Although he rushes in carelessly, he is still able to easily overpower the vampire and officially get his first kill with his infernal blade. Mitsu is pissed off at the fact that he has rushed into an attack yet again, so she tries to slap him again. Yu isn't about to let her slap him, so he just catches her hand and starts to justify his actions. Just then, he looks behind her and notices a vampire coming to attacks, so he drags her out of the way and starts to fight this one. Now that Mitsu is out of the way, he thrusts his sword and kills the vampire with a single slash. Mitsu witnessed this firsthand and is really impressed because she never knew that he was so strong. However, there are still five of them left over, so they brace themselves and prepare for their approach. As the next wave of vampires appear, the entire crew is shocked to see an extra three vampires coming up behind them and grabbing Mitsu by the neck. As Mitsu is being choked, she wonders how this is possible since the little girl they rescued had told them there were a total of seven. The vampire holding her neck hears this and begins to laugh at Mitsu as if she has said something really stupid. After this, he explains that the little girl had intentionally given them false information to protect the lives of her loved ones. Putting that aside, Yu has a serious look on his face while he charges towards the vampire choking Mitsu, so that he makes it there in time. But before he gets there, he is stopped by the other vampires, who aren't as easy for him to defeat as the other ones. During this process, Yu gets himself bruised up while he's attempting to save her, which makes her have flashbacks of when her teammates sacrificed his life for her. But now, even with the bruises, he is able to make it just in time and kill the vampire choking Mitsu, which surprises her because she already believed that she was a gunner. The gang is now back together, so they know it's going to be a piece of cake taking the rest of the vampires out. Shortly after, they are able to defeat all the vampires and then rescue all the humans who have been kept captive. Kwan Yu's way out of the cave, the little girl who lied to him about the number of vampires sees him and immediately runs over to hug him while apologizing for lying. He goes down on one knee and hugs the girl because he knows that she was just doing what was required to protect her family. Then as Shinoa and Mitsu are arranging supplies, they observe this beautiful moment which makes Mitsu start to get curious about Yu and why he behaves in such a manner. So without much hesitation, Shino explains Yu's entire backstory, which shocks Mitsu because she has always assumed that Yu was just an angry kid who sought random vengeance. In the following moments, she goes over to him and lets him know that Shino has informed her about his backstory and also that she doesn't think he was wrong for abandoning his family because it was for the sake of his safety. This story being told makes Mitsu see him in a different light and also builds her respect for him. She has also seen having red blushes on her face while looking at him, which most likely indicates that she now has a crush on him. But even with that, she fails to swallow her pride and thank him for saving her life earlier. A couple hours later, Kimizuki has been able to kickstart a jeep that would make the transportation of the team around the city much easier. Yu finds this to be rather fascinating because he hasn't ridden or even been in a car ever since he was little, so he is excited to get in the driver's seat even though he doesn't know how to drive. However, the others don't allow him to be the driver because he ended up crashing the car while taking it for a test run. Following this, they all get into the car and head for the Shinjuku district for some scouting. As they continue to drive, they see a red-haired being walking up to the middle of the road. It's too late. They take a single look at him and can tell he's a vampire, so Kimizuki steps on the gas and drives the car straight into him while he and the other jump out of the car. Surprisingly, this vampire is able to catch and crush the car despite the fact that it was moving at such a high speed. This red-haired demon then starts to showcase his strength by attacking the squad with minimal effort and still being able to deal a lot of damage. However, Yu catches his attention by being the only one who is able to land a successful hit on him. Just as things are already starting to look bad for them, the vampire's reinforcements arrive which makes Mitsu question whether they all would be able to escape in one piece. Yu asks whether it would be ideal in this situation, Shino responds saying that it indeed would be ideal, but she doubts if the three vampires would be willing to let them go like that. So with this in mind, they all are expected to fight with all they have while keeping in mind that survival isn't guaranteed. Just as the battle is about to begin, the red-haired vampire is called upon by the head vampire Farid, so he has no choice than to be leave with his squad, 
After they leave, Shinoa is really glad that such luck has shown upon them because she could already predict how bad it was going to get. Yo, on the other hand, is angry at the fact that there was such a huge power difference even with his new infernal katana. The city of Shinjuku is now in threat of a deadly attack. So the crew hurry back to inform the other soldiers of the incoming vampires so that the wall of Shinjuku can be protected. Just a few minutes after the news of the demons has spread, the entire Japanese army are seen to be lined up on top of the Shinjuku wall while they defend it against incoming helicopters from the vampire side. At first, they are able to destroy all the choppers, but their luck comes to an end when two vampires send a warplane crashing into the center of the wall, which causes it to crumble and allows the other vampires to infiltrate. This infiltration marks the initial phase of their plan to get into Shinjuku and wipe out of Japanese Imperial Army. Shortly after, a group of vampire arrive on a roof where the crew and some other soldiers also happen to be. So they ended up fighting to the death, resulting in the demon army being victorious. A couple hours later, there were reports of another wave of vampires having broken through the west defensive barrier, meaning that it's going to take a lot of soldiers to rid that area of them. The lieutenant uses a telescope to observe the swarm of vampires as they approach the army civilization. He looks a little further and sees Mika sitting beside the head vampire Farid. Farid is able to sense that someone is looking at him, so he stares straight at the telescope lens, which startles Lieutenant Gurin a little bit. Information is then passed to him that the other protectorates have been successfully evacuated, which means that the demon army is ready for the war that is about to take place. Meanwhile down with Mika, Farid helps him acknowledge that he has always been reluctant to drink human blood. In the midst of their comrades drinking the blood of the soldiers, Farid advises Mika to go and get some as well because bad things happen to a vampire when they don't get their due nutrition. But even with that being said, Mika maintains his promise of not drinking any human's blood even though he really wants to. This brings us to an instance four years ago, where he has just been transformed into a vampire and is seen lying before the vampire queen Cruel. At this time, Cruel is doing her utmost best to persuade Mika into drinking some human blood while she lets him know all the disadvantages of not doing so. After he still resists for a while, she understands that he feels this way because he was formerly a human, so she decides to make up for it by giving him a glass of her own blood to drink. Mika remains on the floor and still rejects the blood by slapping it out of her hand. At this point, the queen has given up on him and starts to walk back to her throne, but to her surprise, Mika rushes over to her leg and starts to suck some of her blood because he wasn't able to resist the temptation. The queen is shocked to see this, but is also really happy that Mika has finally accepted being a vampire. Ever since that day, Mika vowed to never drink any human's blood ever. Even on this mission, he has brought about 10 days worth of Cruel's blood to sustain himself. Later that afternoon, the crew members are being transported to the other side of town in a huge military truck. As they ride the back seats, they start to wonder how exactly they are going to be able to defeat the vampires because they obviously aren't strong enough as they are. After this is said, Shino informs the others of a mystic pill which allegedly multiplies a soldier's power by letting him assume full power over his demon weapon for the limited time frame of 15 minutes. Yuk hears this and starts getting excited by it, so he says he is going to take 10 of them at once. Shinoa lets him know that wouldn't be ideal because even just taking three at once would be a definite sentence. If a soldier is to take two at once, they would feel a lot of shock and tension, which is enough to kill them, but their death wouldn't be guaranteed. The fact that these pills are so dangerous is why most soldiers only take one at a time, so Shinoa explains this and hands the one box each filled with the pill. Just then, their car starts to topple over as a result of an attack being launched on it from the sky. After the crew members are able to make it out, they spot the vampire helicopter that attacked them and immediately start to make plans to stop it. At the same time, they all notice that the army corporal who was driving the car has gone unconscious while he remains in the driver's seat. So Yu rushes over to help him because he doesn't want to leave anyone behind. With the help of his crew, he is able to save the corporal just in time, but just then the ground collapses and throws them all underground. A couple minutes later, Yu and Shinoa wake up at one end of the subway tunnel while the rest of them are stuck at the other end. They are able to communicate through the stone, so they agree on a rendezvous point to meet at. As the sun sets, Lieutenant Guren has begun the war by going up to Mika and preparing to battle him. After Yu and Shinoa are able to escape from the tunnel, they take the corporal to a medical house where he is given immediate medical attention. After this, Shino informs him that Lieutenant Gurren is currently on the battlefield and has called their squad for backup. The lieutenant and his team are currently at the main intersection of the West Shinjuku's 5th district and are facing the vampire's main army. 
He wants to ensure this victory, which is why he is calling for all the reinforcements that he can get. As she and you are walking to the battlefield, he overhears a group of soldiers talking about squad of kid soldiers who are getting their butts kicked by the vampires, which is most likely the remainder of their squad. He hears this and immediately decides to go and help them rather than the lieutenant because he doesn't want to lose any comrades during this war. As he walks away, Shinoa tries to convince him to continue their initial mission of helping the lieutenant. But he doesn't seem to care anymore now that his comrades are in trouble. Meanwhile, the lieutenant and his team seem to be holding the vampires off properly. Although they don't deal that much damage, the battle still remains balanced and doesn't seem to be proceeding in anyone's favor. Farid watches this and gets bored after a few minutes, so he suggests that he and Mika go over to kill the lieutenant directly since he is considered to be the biggest threat. As you and Shinoa run over the Shinjuku Central Park, they start to see the rest of their comrades battling some vampires. Although he manages to save Kimizuki at the last second, they didn't really need Yu's and Shinoa's intervention because they pretty much had it all covered. Above all, Kimizuki is a bit upset that Yu didn't think that they'll be strong enough to handle the vampires, so because of that he asks him to put more faith in them on the battlefield. Gurren and his team are still busy battling Mika. Up to a point, they seem to have the upper hand since they are all working together against him. Then just when the time is right, the lieutenant goes up behind him and attempts to stab him straight through the chest. But before he is able to, the head vampire Farid jumps to his rescue and blocks his attack. Farid then tells Mika not to underestimate humans so much because he would have died if not for his intervention. After this, the lieutenant is sent flying onto a bed of rocks where he realizes that he has no choice than to take an extra pill to even stand a chance. His comrades advise him not to do it, but he knows he would end up dead anyways if he doesn't, so he decides to take it. Before the effects are even able to kick on, Mika comes over to the lieutenant and prepares to stab him to death and close his chapter. At this same time, Yu and his squad are seen to be approaching them with full force. Shinoa tells them all to take an enhancement pill, because she knows they have a huge battle ahead of them. Yu looks ahead and sees that the lieutenant is about to get killed by a vampire, so he increases his sprint so that he would be able to get there in time. Unfortunately, Mika stabs the lieutenant in the chest, but immediately after that, Yu is running up to Mika with all he has in an attempt to kill him. As Yu gets closer, Mika turns around and gets a clearer look at him and then recognizes him to be the same Yu from the orphanage. But before he is able to recognize Mika, he has already used his infernal blade to stab him straight through the chest. After Yu has successfully pierced him through the chest, he gets a closer look and immediately recognizes him to be his long-lost brother. Because of this, Yu fails to ignite his sword curse, which would kill the vampire Mika. The lieutenant is confused at why Yu hasn't killed the vampire yet, so he picks his sword up and launches an attack on Mika, which makes him land on the other side of the ground. Now that Farid understands that Mika has been reunited with his lost brother, he says that he's going to kill everyone except for Yu so that he and Mika can live a good life together. Mika himself is in support of this because he can tell that Yu has made some friends, but he thinks that they are not real friends and are just using him. At this time, the red-haired vampire we were formerly introduced to and his crew members appear. He goes by the name Crowley and he is delighted to see that he gets to encounter Yu and his crew again. Gurin observes the situation and feels it's best to retreat back to the second defense line, but Yu doesn't want to do this because he has just been reunited with Mika. However, Gurin doesn't care much about that, just being there is placing the entire squad at risk. Yu doesn't follow the retreat orders and just starts to launch a flurry of attacks at Ferry because he just had some flashbacks of the moment where he killed his family. Although the lieutenant detests this behavior, he decides to join in on the attack on Ferret and hope that it might be successful. During this battle, Mika spots an opportunity, so he picks you off the ground and runs away with him in his arms. Yu doesn't wish to leave his comrades behind, so he tells Mika to put him down. They both land on a rooftop where Mika continues to beg Yu to forget about his life with the humans and to run away with him. Suddenly, he observes that his teammates are on the verge of death at the hand of the vampires. This moment makes him feel like he's losing his family all over again, so it causes him to snap and makes his left eye go bloody. After this, he finds himself in a peaceful grassland with his infernal demon Asura Maru, who tells him to follow Mika's lead and get the hell out of there because something evil is about to befall them. Before she is able to give him the complete warning, Yu snaps and starts to scream at the top of his lungs, while some strange black wings start to grow from his back. Apparently, Yu's condition is the result of experiments the lieutenant conducted on him when he was little. In this state, he doesn't have any memories of his friends whatsoever, and is aimed at destroying every single thing in sight. 
After causing some major chaos, he goes up to Shinoa and attempts to stab her, but Mika arrives just in time to save her by placing his body in front of his blade. Following this, the lieutenant orders Shinoa to try to talk to you and get him out of this state, because it's possible for one to make him snap out of it. As Mika is still being stabbed, she runs up to him and gives him a big hug while begging him to snap out of it with tears in her eyes. Fortunately for her, Yu is able to snap out of this state before he causes any more damage to Shinoa. His eyes come back to white and the wings disappear, which all indicate that he's back to his regular self. Now that this is over, the head vampire Farad holds the lieutenant by the throat and smirks because he believes that he is still going to be victorious after everything. The lieutenant then lets off a smile of his own and informs Farad that this was all a ploy to stall for time. A sniper then lets off an infernal shot from distance which is aimed at Farad, but fails to hit him due to his quick reflexes. After the explosion occurs, a large army of demon soldiers are seen to have arrived with the general Hiragi as their leader. This was what Guren has been waiting for all this while, so with these reinforcements, he is confident that his side would emerge victorious. We are taken to a flashback where Shinoa is seen to be exploring the undergrounds of the school, where she discovers that Lieutenant Guren has been conducting vampire experiments on you. Guren knows that this isn't the right thing to do, but he still feels like he isn't left with much of a choice because he really wants to get rid of the vampires. Back to the present day, the vampires are overwhelmed by the new swarm of soldiers that have arrived, so Farid thinks it would be best to retreat and fight another day. Mika, on the other hand, doesn't support the idea of retreat, so he makes them aware of his thoughts. At this point, Farid knows that he can't afford any slip-ups, so he just grabs Mika by the throat and forces him to comply or else he would kill him. One cool evening, Yu wakes up on a hospital bed with Yoichi sleeping beside him. Yoichi also wakes up and is really excited to see Yu awake because he has apparently been in a coma for seven days after the war. After this, he leaves the room to go and alert everyone else to the good news of his awakening. Shortly after, Shinoa comes into the room to check up on Yu since she has just been alerted of his awakening. During their discussion, Yu mentions that he doesn't have memory of anything that happened before then, so he asks her to fill him in on what happened. With this being said, she goes on to say that during the war, you had suddenly fallen unconscious and the rest of them were all on the verge of annihilation. But fortunately for them, the reinforcements soon arrived with the likes of the Lieutenant General Kiredo and Major General Shinya leading the main unit. Head vampires aside, they were able to defeat many of the normal ones and also managed to capture a few of them. And as for Mika, he was taken back along with the other vampires who managed to retreat. He was not happy that Mika returned back with them, though he is slightly relieved that he's still alive somewhere. A couple minutes later, the rest of the crew are reunited back with Yu, and they do well to let him know just how much they have missed him. Then later that night, after they had all left his room, Yu stares out the window to the stars as he wonders what on earth he could have done to have gotten so lucky up until this point in his life. Regardless of that, as far as Mika is alive, he vows to do everything in his power to make sure he is reunited with his long-lost brother. The End